On the phone, it is a uh, pleasure to welcome to the program Garland Gilchrist. He is the National Campaign Director for MoveOn.org. Welcome to the program, Garland. Happy to be here, Sam. Uh, so, Garland, uh, uh, tell me uh, just uh, n- what what MoveOn's doing, but but uh, let's talk about sort of the unprecedented nature of the pushback on this uh, SOPA and uh, PIPA uh, are the acronyms for this legislation uh, in the Senate and in the House. Uh, the, the, the coordination, or maybe not necessarily coordination, but the sort of unified pushback by groups that are not terribly political. Absolutely. You, you can call it really just parallel outrage to Internet censorship. That's really what it is. Don't think about it as SOPA and PIPA. Think about it as people standing up and saying they hate Internet censorship and they want to stop it. I mean, we've never really seen activism like this online before. I mean, MoveOn.org has never blacked out its website and protest to anything, and we're not the first. Wikipedia has never done this. Google's never taken political action in protest. So many sites are really breaking new ground in activism, and that's because this Internet censorship legislation is so terrible. Yeah, let's uh, uh, tell me about the state of play of this. I know that um, the sort of the the brewing pushback over the weekend uh, caused the White House uh, to come out and say they didn't like um, a certain aspect of the bill. Maybe you can walk us through that a little bit and give us a sense of what the state of play is right now uh, with the bills. Sure. Well, the most important thing uh, to think about going forward is that the Senate is still scheduled to vote on the bill, uh, the PIPA bill in the Senate on January 24th, the same day as the State of the Union. So really this activism today is all about making calls and contacting your senators to let them know how you want them to vote or how you want them to reject Internet censorship. Um, But yes, the White House came out with a pretty strong statement saying that they did not endorse Internet censorship and they did not endorse the bills as written. You've had co-sponsors from this bill dropping like flies earlier today. Senator Marco Rubio, who was an original co-sponsor, a Republican, dropped his support. Late last week, Senator Ben Cardin from Maryland, an original co-sponsor, dropped his support. You've got senators from both parties, you know, saying that they're hearing from their constituents, hearing from people saying they don't want Internet censorship, and they're, you know, running from this like a house on fire. Well, that's that's uh, fantastic. And um, uh, take us through uh, what uh, what the real problems are uh, with this bill. I mean, um, I understand that in a in a, in a blanket sense, we're talking about uh, some form of uh, uh, internet censorship, uh, but what do you say to uh, those people who um, who are uh, who see this as just basically thievery that's going on uh, online? Well, let me give you an example to make it clear actually what this bill does and why it's so bad. Let's say you have a blog or you have like the the open thread or forum on the Majority Report website. And uh, a commenter, a user, someone participating in the forum just decides to link to another website. If that website that they link to has even allegedly infringing content, that could put, uh, you know, you, the owner of the Majority Report forum, in danger, and the person that linked also in danger of your website getting shut down. This is really just like throw the baby out with the bathwater. If we even think someone could potentially be infringing on copyright, big media companies and their lobbyists can then compel the Department of Justice to take action to get that site shut down, to get that site delisted from search engines, or to even uh, get that site to stop being able to process payments. I mean, these things are really, really awful. And so for all the people that are representing uh, the the very small minority that are supporting this bill, I mean, you have the people that made a movie like Arthur, and they thought it was going to be a huge, you know, summer blockbuster, and obviously it wasn't. And so they got really mad about that and decided to blame piracy for the reason that that movie flopped. Wait a I mean, second. Wait, 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 wait one second. <laughs> Are you telling me the remake of Arthur was not a huge hit? I mean, I mean, gosh, I mean, you know, me and all my friends might have went to see it, but no one else on the planet did. And they wanted to blame piracy for that. I mean, it gives you a sense of the people who are trying to push this bill don't want to innovate in terms of business models. They don't want to make good content that people actually want to share. They instead want to protect bad products. And so, you know, them and the people that they're paying are the ones that are pushing this bill. Whereas on the other side, you have, you know, Internet activists, like, you know, move on 6 million-plus members who are all saying they don't want Internet censorship. you got cybersecurity experts. you got the fathers of the Internet, you know, like Ben Surf and Tim Berners-Lee. you got venture capitalists. you got the Tea Party patriots even saying that this is really terrible. And so these are the people that are against this, whereas the people who are paying for paying to make bad movies and paying people to protect their bad movies are the ones that are for it. 
And, and you know, I mean, I, I, I think uh, having spent some time in uh, in Hollywood myself, I think uh, you're spot on. Uh, you know, when they have to go back to their shareholders or when they have to go back to their bosses and say, why did this movie underperform? Uh, the easiest thing in the world to say is piracy. Now, as far as I know, there's absolutely zero data to suggest that um, piracy is in any way um, a hurting the business models of these companies in any significant way or maybe in any way. Absolutely, Sam. I mean, you want to know what the largest grossing uh, year in terms of revenue for Hollywood was last year, 2011. The largest grossing year before 2011 was 2010. The largest grossing year before 2010 was 2009. This industry has no issues making money. So the fact that they're just inventing the straw man and, and piracy is really just you know, a way that they can try to sneak through some legislation that they really want to break the Internet as it was intended and designed. Now, I, I imagine as uh, the national campaign director for, uh, for Move On, you, uh, you have a pretty good sense of just sort of the way – um, the the way that legislation gets passed, and do you is it your sense that uh, the the senators and the Congress people who co sponsored this or came out and support do you, do you have a sense that they really sort of under they they understand what the mechanics of this are, or was it simply Chris Dodd called me? We get a lot of money from uh, the, uh, the, the, the lobbying groups that represent Hollywood, and nobody's going to care about this. The Internet's just a series of tubes, and, uh, <laughs> and there's no reason to worry about this. It's not like anybody's going to pay attention to this. Is that, is that your sense well, of what happened? Yeah, I mean, I think I think what happened is last summer, you know, a bunch of Hollywood lobbyists thought they could just sort of wave their wallets in front of a few senators, and they could really get whatever they wanted. But the proof has been in the pudding that the longer this bill has been out there, the more that people on the Internet and activists in general have found out about this bill, the more they hate it and the more that they are reaching out to their elected officials. And so, so now the elected officials are hearing a different voice. They're not just hearing from the Hollywood lobbyists, you know, a former senators that represent Hollywood lobbyists, et cetera. They're not hearing from them. Now they're starting to hear from real people. And when they started hearing from more and more real people, their positions magically started to change. Every senator and every member of Congress who's flipped their position on this bill has said in their public statement that they heard from their constituents that this is the problem. I don't know if that's ever happened where everyone has been so consistent in saying that public pressure push them to change their position. I mean, this is really monumental. Now, I, I, I may be a little cynical here, um, and I, I have no doubt that uh, public pressure was a big part of it. But, but to a certain extent, aren't we also just watching um, uh, a, a clash of sort of two industries here? I mean, you know, uh, Google... Uh, and, uh, you know, outfits like uh, Reddit and uh, these outfits, these are no small shakes. I mean, the, we're seeing, and I imagine there's a lot of sort of Silicon Valley money out there, and I imagine there's a lot of uh, sort of counter-lobbying on a, on a level that goes beyond uh, the public. I, I mean, I have no doubt that the public uh, is there, but d is, are we seeing, uh, l let me ask you this way, are we seeing... A, um, a mobilization of public support that uh, is greater than we normally see because uh, of these companies' relationship with Internet users. Uh, is that the primary uh, driving force, or is it also the combination of public mobility and the fact that we have another very powerful industry that is also pushing back? I think the fact that companies like Google and Tumblr and Reddit have such a strong relationship with their members and can can, you know, help mobilize them is definitely something that's helping here. I mean, Tumblr in October drove 87,000 calls to Congress in one day about the, the House version of these Internet censorship bills. So that, that is something that's really happening. But I don't want, I think it's wrong to classify this as the technology industry versus the entertainment industry with a few, with a few people screaming in between. This is really about, you know, people who understand that the Internet is the future. The Internet is the future of job creation and of innovation in the, in the United States. And regular people like me who use the Internet every day to do all sorts of things understand that viscerally, and so we want to speak up about it. And I'm really happy to see that MoveOn.org 
is enabling its members to do that. That Reddit is ena- enabling its users to do that. That Google has taken the unprecedented step to let people that go to its homepage be able to speak up. So, you know, I, I think that it is also, it's in, it's in Google's interest for the Internet not to be broken, but it's also in my interest as an Internet user mm. for the Internet not to be broken. And do you think that uh, we're going to see more uh, activism like this from these sites? Um, or is this sort of one of those special occasions because this activism deals with the with the architecture of the Internet rather than uh, any issues that are sort of um, that flow through the tubes? This is about the tubes as opposed to the <laughs> stuff that flows through it. Well, the first occasion is always a special occasion. So this is something that I think will be historic and will remember. But I think as long as you have, you know, lobbyists trying to convince lawmakers that the Internet needs to work in a fundamentally different way than it was designed and intended, there will be an opportunity for companies and for Internet users to speak out. And so, you know, this, this may be an unprecedented day in terms of the size and scale of the uh, outrage and the outreach to Congress. But I uh, have no doubt that there will be continued activism on this issue as long as the Internet is self threatened. Uh, Garland Gilchrist, uh, National uh, Campaign Director of MoveOn.org, thanks so much for joining us.